Welcome back to the Scorecast Centre, it's Jacka here and we're at Hot Pod again with Sarah and we're going to look now, we've been building gradually, we're going to look now at um, handstand, alignment and balance. If you haven't clicked uh, subscribe, make sure you click subscribe below and if you haven't checked out Hot Pod, uh, make sure you look at the link in the description below and then we'll get into this week's lesson. So we've been working with, um, with Sarah progressively on building up some of our our, our skills in being able to balance on our hands and we're going to now look at the alignment in the full position but we're going to use our assistant tool from Locker which is our friend the wall and then we might even use our friend the friend Maybe. later towards at the we'll end see. we'll see how we get on um, <laughs> but if you haven't warmed obviously we've warmed up if you haven't warmed up um, the first video we did has got um, Sarah taking us through some great yoga uh, movements helping to uh, create good range of motion at the shoulder like the movement preparation work that we do and then we've also looked at some exercises to help um, warm up the muscles that stabilize the shoulder in this overhead position which is going to be really important now so don't go into this cold make sure you check out that video and uh, and you you get warmed up effectively before you go into this okay so um, but the first exercise we're going to look at is a wall walk which is going to we're going to walk our way backwards from a like press-up position with our feet against the wall and we're going to then use the wall um, not only to help us with our balance but we're actually going to use the wall to help us um, with our alignment and teach us that alignment. So I'm going to try and do it and talk at the same time and see how we go for how far out of breath I get. But you're going to go hands on the floor, um, feet go onto the wall and you're going to start to carefully try and walk your feet back. One thing that might happen is you might get to here and that might be enough for you. What's important is that you work on your alignment. So I'm going to push my head through, I'm going to squeeze, you should see the bum come on as I sort of pull that tailbone underneath and then pull my rib cage down and push my head through. So I can work on my alignment here if I'm, if I'm not comfortable getting fully upside down. But if we get good, we want to walk all the way towards the wall. Hands stay a little bit away from the wall still. But then what I'm going to try and do is point my toes, make myself as long as possible. So I'm almost doing like a shrug where I push my feet to the ceiling and then nose goes against the wall, chest is against the wall, uh, legs are nice and flat against the wall and I've got my alignment in there. Once I'm comfortable, I can walk my hands back out walk my feet back down the wall. If you really want to try and sort of show off, you can go into like a, a press up position against the wall here, but that's optional. <laughs> but that's- still watching my paintwork. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, keep my feet clean. But what we, uh, as you come down, what's nice, one thing that's nice when you're coming down is as well, you're getting that, as you're walking your hands, you're getting that shoulder stability each time you go and you're getting that trunk control. So you're getting more than one thing. You're not just getting the alignment at the top. If you're careful about how you come down I've done one rep and I'm out of breath you see that actually you're getting a decent sort of yeah. capacity strength work as well as challenging your stabilizer as you go through that so do you want to give us a yeah. give us a go <laughs> are your feet clean as well no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trouble with white walls um, I'm not sure if my shoulders are strong enough for this I haven't done this okay. Give it a try. <laughs> okay so yeah nice so steady as we go Yeah, bring your feet together, bring your feet together, so that's it. I don't I can, think I've got the yeah. strength to go. So we can stay, yeah, so we can stay there, good. So bum goes on, pull underneath, good, rib cage down. And then you're creating that nice alignment still. And then what we'd work with Sarah is we'd hold, try and, try and push yourself high, your feet high towards the seat. Yeah, if you put them that way, yeah, good. And then try and drive your feet further up the wall a tiny bit. Yeah, no, there we go, good. Nice, and then... Uh, hook your toes back underneath and then you can walk your, yeah, walk your hands a bit further forward as you come down. Nice. Yeah, good. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> did, we'd see as you went, as you did that like extra I little bit it. of length and yeah. you, then you should have seen the feet just moved another inch and that's just rather than the shoulder resting on the joint, we're actually creating some tension through there. Yeah. And then what we would do with Sarah is gradually see nice, great alignment. The big thing that we don't want to do is go into that, be in that position and be all bent and arched like this or banana like that. That's putting a lot of pressure on my, my lower back. I just got to a point where I, I, I couldn't, I was it too vertical for me to get yeah. the shoulder strength. I couldn't get that. Last yeah, time. you felt a little bit like you didn't have the strength to be able to hold. Yeah. Some of it, I potentially would challenge you that I think you maybe could go further, but okay. the brain is going, this is enough yeah, for me today, <laughs> which is fine. But if you say you haven't done that before, doing. If you imagine if you started as well as your pike push-ups, which is from the last video said you're going to do once a week, you can, uh, if you started building this in once a week and just as a little bit of, it could be part of your warm-up almost. Yeah. Once you've prepped with the shoulders, practicing this 
um, just doing a few reps, um, but progressively getting closer and closer and closer to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so why, if I had my back to the wall, yeah, I was having my feet up, yeah. I'd be completely vertical. Yeah. Why can't I do it chest to wall? Uh, so well, that's, what, so that's what I was saying. I think that actually you could. I just oh. don't think you were. You, your brain was just saying this is enough okay. for me. So that it's not actually, an anatomical front back of body. I don't think so. No, because yeah, the, the next thing was great question. The next thing we're going to go into is that kick up because it's going to allow us to go uh, yeah back against the wall, kick up, and we're going to be able to go into a um, look at some of our balance work, which I like to practice my balance work that way around because you can't fall over the top because you're going to hit the wall, and if you fall back the other way, you just put your feet on the floor. Yeah. Whereas if I'm if I'm up this way. And I fall over the top, yeah. then I'm going into You're right. flip, flipping positions. You're right, it is a head thing because so I it, was thinking about neck. Yeah, and, oh, and yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. the brain doesn't want us to get yeah. injured, so it just keeps you totally. um, somewhere that's safe. The other thing is that when you're the position you're in uh, that way around with you with it walking up you were real nice and straight okay. when we go to a kick up now the chance of us going into a more bent back position which we don't want to be in just because of the too much is going to put pressure on the lower lower back um, means that actually you're not you know we're near as straight alignment as you were but it's going to let us do some of the some of the balance work that we want to get done. We sometimes see um, some of the yoga handstands where they're very banana. Yeah. And actually, I've been taught <laughs> before to actually have that head, so um, have that head come back so that you're continuing the banana shape. That right, sense? okay. Yeah, we want we to create like a nice, we don't want to sure. create a nice connection through, yeah. through the whole of the body. Um, I understand why. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if I, um, I'll, if I, sort of showing I can give you I can show you the sort of principle that we're actually just talking about where you were walking and in that real nice straight shape that's the the head in full flexion overhead and and the its stability up there is difficult strength up there is difficult but if you have your hands here not in full flexion then we're stronger here okay. yeah your pike push-ups are yeah. much harder than your normal push-ups because we're, when we're pushing here compared to pushing here yeah. you're getting closer to that full overhead position so um, when we go into kick up you might find that actually you're not in full flexion you're about here and then to find the wall for, for your feet to find the wall you then actually arch the back a little bit too much but from a strength point of view it's easier but we just want to be mindful and wary of what 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 is my back position like so i'll just give an example if my hands are really far away from the wall and i'm going to kick up into this from like a so we go here a split sort of uh, track stance like, you know like a sprinter doing a start position if i'm really far away from the wall like here i kick with my this front leg and the back leg finds the wall but if i go you can see that big arch but yeah. look where my shoulders are and my head is my head's almost trying to find make a triangle with my hands if I took that down rather than pushing through here and I can still be far away from the wall but now that's a lot I'm now squeezing and tucking that tailbone underneath pushing my chest through and I'm now in that sort of full overhead flexion position does that make sense and I'm, I can still create some decent alignment I mean ideally what I would want to do is be a little bit closer to the wall and then I can kick and go through and get that nice alignment but then what I can practice here is first thing create that shrug so you see me lift up bomb on core on and then what i can start to try and do is a little bit of balance using the wall or not the wall and that's what for me personally you can practice balancing the other way against the wall and it's great for the alignment but for a lot of people the worry of if i've legs go over the top i'm doing a flip stops you from being able to actually carry out the exercise so this as long as you're wary of what is my shoulder am i fully in full flexion above head or am i closed off at the shoulder compared to being open is that making me arch my back and can i feel some pressure on my lower back then then that's not a good thing so kick up to the wall get decent alignment and then take one leg away bring the other one to try and join it if you if you fall back down your feet just go on the floor it's safe if you fall the other way, your feet hit the wall and you get to practice, you get another go at it. But it gives you the chance to practice that balance and alignment. Yeah. Some key things on that. Grip with your fingertips. When your feet are going to go towards the wall, you grip with your fingertips and almost claw 
with your fingernails to pull yourself back into alignment as long as you've got that trunk uh, connection made between your glute and your core if you've got that when you make some adjustments at your hand and your wrist it will help adjust you further up the chain cool. so let's see sarah have a go <laughs> <laughs> Down. Can't I just uh, flick into it like a bag of fools? Yeah, you can, oh, you, yeah, you can flick in, you can flick up to it however you want. Which is the, that sort of track start thing. So, um, yeah, if people have done, um, been a, I wasn't a, I wasn't a girl at school, so I did, so I didn't, I didn't do um, cartwheels and kicking up. So I haven't, I haven't got that in my, okay, in my. So, but I know a lot of people find it easy to use a bit of momentum and actually go from here hands down and go into it, like absolutely yeah. fine. If that's easier okay. for you, as long as we're safe and we've got control, then yeah, great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so. Nah, no, okay. okay, yeah, good. So Back what, yeah, so we were, uh, we were, and you were a little bit too, hands were a little bit too close to the wall, so we're a little bit further away. Once we get there, okay. then we can worry. But once we get there and happy, even if we're bent, we can then sort your alignment out yep. and then you can have a practice. Okay, yeah? so a bit further. Good, okay. So you're happy there? Yeah. Now think about your alignment. So think about taking your head, head to come through this way more. Okay. There we go. And then bum on, core on, that's better. And then try and take one, there we go. Nice. Good, yeah? <laughs> one thing I would say, so a couple of things. Um, we saw how we got into position, then sort the alignment out. Great. Yeah. The other thing, you had your feet together which is great, so it means a lot of the time people have the feet apart and then they're, they're balancing separately to each other, whereas if you have them together, they can use each other to control that balance. Um, when you, what I think something that you could, would help you is when you have both legs on the wall, rather than going, I'm gonna now take both of them off, okay. go one leg comes off and then join the other one to find it. So that one leg can find, if I, yep. if I do a little demo again. So if I get my alignment and then I go, so put this leg yeah. where I want the, where it feels like is a good sort of stacked aligned position. And then gradually just try and tap that one against the wall, tap it a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. And then until you can actually bring them yeah. both together. Yeah. Um, just makes it a little bit easier rather than just going full use of the wall, no use of the wall, you go one at a, one at a time. And you that's just a, say that, I just <laughs> no, yeah, but, I but, it's, but it's just a, but it's a great point just for people at home that they yeah. can practice on that and work on that yeah. themselves. Cool. So uh, I hope that helps you with your actual alignment. So thinking about what that alignment's like, the balance aspect in that last one, but also building up some strength whilst you're in that overhead position. Um, if you've got any questions about handstands or anything even to do with yoga, uh, put them in the comments below. If you haven't checked out Hot Pod Yoga yet, then make sure you look at the, uh, in the description, we've got the link to their website. Um, great, uh, have something that I use myself to help work on my flexibility and mobility, um, which is totally, I, I came to Hot Pod Yoga just as, a, just as a, um, a customer, and it was only by seeing what they were doing that it was like, okay, there was a great fit and crossover here with calisthenics, and so that's why I wanted to hook up and, and put some things together. So we hope you've, awesome. uh, Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Sarah for coming on Thank the uh, channel and, and helping us out. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helped you. Um, if you haven't seen, uh, sorry, haven't subscribed, make sure you click up there by Sarah's head. If you haven't got a free beginner's guide and you just want to just start out in calisthenics, that's down there and that's free uh, from our, to download from our website. And if you haven't seen um, any of the previous videos we had uh, done with uh, Sarah and Hot Pod Yoga, that's just up there. So until next time. Class dismissed.